According to the 30-year average from 1991 to 2010, the United States documents an average of 1,251 tornadoes per year. In 2021, the total number recorded was 1,314, placing 2021 as a year with an above-average tornado count. Two of the most prolific tornado outbreaks of the year occurred in December, with the one on the 10th being responsible for the Quad State Supercell that spawned the infamous Western Kentucky tornado. This tornado outbreak also held a record for the highest number of tornadoes spawned by a December outbreak, broken less than a week later on the 15th, when a potent derecho traversed the Midwest region. However, another significant outbreak happened earlier on in the year. On March 25th, a prolific tornado outbreak took place across the southeastern United States, where a string of powerful tornadoes would touch down across the states of Alabama and Georgia, reaping a trail of destruction for those caught in their path of furies. Leading up to the 25th, a surface cyclone situated over southeastern Arkansas was forecasted to gradually advance in a northeasterly direction, strengthening as it interacts with the shortwave trough. In doing so it will draw in dew points in the mid-60s to low-70s across the states of Mississippi, Alabama, and Tennessee. Destabilization of the atmosphere was also expected. With temperatures on the surface measured to be around 70 degrees Fahrenheit, the cape was measured to be at 2,000 joules per kilogram, a value beyond sufficient to produce intense and severe thunderstorms. Finally, there was a strong abundance of wind shear. All the environmental factors are working together to create a recipe for disaster, waiting for any system to take advantage of the circumstances. The volatile atmosphere was discerned, and the Storm Prediction Center issued an extremely rare high risk of severe weather on their convective outlook. The second time in only eight days that such a high degree of risk is on the table. This would also be the last high-risk outlook issued until two years later, on March 31, 2023. Shortly after noon on March 25, 2021, a supercell spawned the first of the five intense tornadoes recorded on the day. It touched down near Gabriel Creek Road and rapidly intensified as it progressed northeast. The tempest produced widespread and significant timber damage on County Road 50 and National Forest Road 706, and multiple hardwood trees were debarked under wind speeds of 140 miles per hour. The tornado crossed into Tuscaloosa County as it traversed National Forest Road 721, where it would dissipate after 13 minutes. Damage surveys conducted with this tornado concluded with an EF3 rating. Following the dissipation of the previous tornado, the supercell responsible traversed in a similar general direction, east through Tuscaloosa County and entered Bibb County, where it will hatch another tornado near Highway 24 in the city of West Blockton at 12.53 p.m. Navigating across and past Highway 5, it would uproot trees and blow away shingles off roofs. A significant number of trees were snapped as the intensifying tornado tore through the area at EF to strength, weakening down to between EF0 to EF1 intensity as it moved into Shelby County. The tornado continued to inflict tree damage, paralleling County Highway 13. The tornado entered the city of Helena, where shingle damage was inflicted upon neighborhoods, and a house that was under construction was torn apart. As the system crosses over Buck Creek Road, intensification recurred as it continued to damage roofs near Cunningham Drive. Damage at EF to intensity was observed in the city of Pelham, where in addition to the removal of roofs, the collapse of exterior walls also took place. Downing trees in the Chandelar neighborhood, the tornado would traverse across several highways before producing EF to degree of damage near Hardmont Park and the elementary and intermediate schools of Oak Mountain, continuing to produce timber and roof damage along its path. The tornado set its sights on the Eagle Point neighborhood. Having peaked at EF3 intensity, it ravaged across the community, where it produced some of the worst damage of its lifetime. Trees were snapped, roofs were torn off once again, with the walls caving in at a number of houses. All walls collapsed for an unfortunate house on Eagle Valley Drive. From this point on, the tornado would continue to inflict tree and roof damage across several communities. It crossed Double Oak Mountain and destroyed a manufactured home located on Crab Apple Lane, 
before it dispersed near Wolf Creek Row. Just after it crossed into St. Clair County, it injured five people along its track of 50 miles, over a time frame of one hour and nine minutes. The supercell that occasioned the two previous tornadoes proceeded in a northeasterly manner through St. Clair County and into Calhoun County, where a third tornado would touch down. Initially snapping and uprooting trees, it wouldn't be long until it widened in diameter and damaged structures, down power lines and lifted roofs off of a manufactured home, a metal building system, and a doctor's office across Boiling Springs Road, strengthening to EF2 intensity. The tornado would completely destroy a manufactured home on Simpson Bend Road as it progressed towards the unincorporated community of Macon, where multiple mobile homes took the brunt of the damage, being completely demolished. Damage between site-built homes was ranged, with some sustaining severe destruction. Along Reagan Chapel Road, a substantial amount of hardwood trees would also be snapped under the ferocious winds. The tornado made a slight turn to the east and traversed towards Highway 77. In its path, stood a factory by the name of Precision Materials. With limited time, more than 20 occupants sheltered in an interior bathroom as the tornado, now having acquired a multi-vortex structure and intensified to EF3 strength, ripped through the building, which lifted the walls, collapsed the structure, and bent and caved the metal frame inwards. Fortunately, all of the occupants would escape unscathed. Nearby, a tractor trailer was almost lifted up into the air and was dragged for a length of nearly 20 meters by the winds, crossing Highway 77. The calamity would continue to inflict damage upon several structures situated near Reagan's Chapel Road at EF to intensity, blowing out windows and tearing off rooftops. One would seek shelter inside the bathroom of the Reagan's Chapel United Methodist Church and was uninjured. The church sustained heavy damage, as with a caretaker's home behind, several manufactured homes would either be severely damaged or be completely demolished on Mud Street and Lost Creek Road as the tornado roared through. Unfortunately, the tornado would claim its first victim's life here as it destroyed an unincored home. Weakening down to EF1 intensity, it would then move over a large stretch of wooded areas, where many trees would be snapped or uprooted. As the tornado continued along Dark Hollow Road and Boiling Springs Road, it downed power lines, snapped poles and severely damaged several manufactured homes. The system tore through Ingram Wells Road and inflicted EF1 levels of damage upon a number of structures. With two outbuildings overturned, the tornado intensified again to EF to strength as it raged through Graydon Road South. Multiple manufactured homes were destroyed, sweeping the undercarriages and contents downstream. Tragically, three lives would be lost here. Exiting the area, the system continued to impose damage to trees at EF1 intensity. Soon, the tornado would cross US Highway 431 as it progressed into an unincorporated community by the name of Wellington, having intensified to EF to strength. Here, a convenience store and a number of site-built homes would sustain heavy damage. One in particular suffered a collapse of most walls, and another one being shifted from its foundation. Cars would also be tossed in this area, and the tornado would sadly claim one life before exiting. Advancing east, an outbuilding and several manufactured homes would be damaged near Old Sulphur Springs Road. When weakened back down to EF1 intensity, the tornado would tear off roofs from site-built homes across several streets. In addition, it would also inflict damage upon chicken houses, churches, and a business before producing primarily damage upon hundreds of trees for the remainder of its life, where it would dissipate near Spring Garden High School 56 minutes after touchdown. This tornado was the deadliest of the entire outbreak and claimed six lives and caused 10 injuries over a 38-mile long path. The time is for 26 in the afternoon, an hour after the previous tornado's dissipation. Located to the southwest, a separate supercell thunderstorm would produce yet another devastating, long-track tornado. Forming along Highway 17 in Hale County, the tornado would initially snap and uproot trees at EF1 level of intensity. However, rapid intensification soon ensued as it downed multiple trees, occasionally peaking at EF3 strength. Debris was also swept into the air and would impact trees, which inflicted debarking. Homes would sustain varying degrees of damage, from torn roofs to shifted foundations. Finally, the tornado downed five transmission towers before it exited Hale County, injuring six. 
Entering Perry County with EF to level of wind speeds, it destroyed a manufactured home and heavily damaged a site-built home. Yet another giant swath of tree damage was observed, something this tornado would be notorious for. Along County Road 23 and Salem Church Road, a manufactured home was completely destroyed to site. Built homes sustained damage and a church sustained roof loss. The tornado also briefly intensified to EF3 strength and debarked a tree, before weakening down to EF2 intensity as it continued to down trees along its path. However, it would strengthen to EF3 intensity once again as it entered Bibb County. Along Belcher Road, a broken anchor would cause a metal building to crash into a house nearby, with a site-built home nearby suffering roof and garage damage. Entering Centerville, the tornado would continue to down trees, especially along Cahaba River. Near Montgomery Road, mobile homes were crushed by trees falling, and roofs were torn off a motel and houses. Further on, near Coppers Creek passing, two manufactured homes were destroyed as the tornado briefly re-intensified to EF to strength. Tearing through Ashby, residences would sustain varying degrees of damage, from roofs torn off to being completely destroyed. The tornado would injure five before moving out of Bibb County, briefly crossing into Chilton County, downing several trees at EF1 intensity. As the tornado moved into Shelby County, it uprooted trees and destroyed a manufactured home in Calera. En route to and in Columbiana, the funnel would continue to produce tree damage and inflicting roof damage upon residences, completely destroying a manufactured home before, at last, after having wreaked havoc for over an hour and a half over its 80-mile trek, dissipate near Highway 25 at 6.04 p.m., this tornado injured 13 and fortunately caused no fatalities. This has contributed to the situation being well warned, with people sheltering upon the issuance of the tornado warnings. This tornado was the longest track tornado in the outbreak, and the seventh longest track tornado in Alabama history. At 9.55 p.m., a tornado formed over the northern fringes of Tallapoosa County, Alabama, and would travel through Randolph and Clay Counties, inflicting damages upon the communities of Sykesville and Corinth, and was rated as an EF to tornado. Gradual weakening ensued as it approached the Alabama-Georgia state line and dissipated at 10.31. However, the supercell would cross into Georgia and produce the most violent tornado of the entire outbreak. At 11.37 p.m., said tornado would touch down along Redland Drive and parallel Georgia State Route 34. Strengthening to EF1 intensity, the tornado entered the city of Franklin as it uprooted some trees. Near Bevis Road, metal roofs and purlins were torn off from structures, and canopies of a nearby gas station would collapse under the strong winds. Now having maintained EF to level of wind speeds, the tornado marched toward a cluster of homes, tore roofs off plenty of them, collapsed some walls and completely destroyed some outbuildings. Several trees would also be uprooted. The tornado then moved out of Franklin and continued to parallel Georgia State Route 34, over a forested area, only occasionally impacting some damage indicators. Six minutes before midnight, the tornado entered Kuwaita County with its sights set on the city of Noonan. As it approached the city, it began to intensify in strength and expanded in size. On Smoky Road and near Holbrook Road, trees would be uprooted at EF to intensity, with some falling on houses. A swath of houses located in neighborhoods outside of Noonan city limits sustained damages corresponding to EF3 wind speeds, with multiple instances of collapsed walls and massive roof damage. The tornado entered western Noonan and attained its maximum intensity with winds measuring it at 170 miles per hour, which corresponded to low in EF for intensity. Multiple houses located on Fairview Drive would be completely reduced to piles of debris, left unrecognizable. A similar story unfolded for more houses on Arlington Court, wrecked to heaps of rubble. The tornado weakened slightly, but still maintained EF3 intensity, as it continued to parallel Lagrange Street and impacted Noonan High School. The second floor of a building would suffer a partial wall collapse. Other forms of damage include shattered windows, broken doors, and damaged roofs. After, the tornado directly struck southern downtown Noonan. In this area, the vast majority of the damage indicators would signify an EF to intensity, including 
snapped electrical transmission poles, torn roofs and significant damage to structures. Two retail buildings, a Walmart and a Kmart, suffered collapses of exterior walls. The tornado then directly passed through the Justice Center and the administrative building located nearby would sustain damage. A fast food restaurant experienced EF3 level of intensity as its exterior wall suffered a total collapse. More trees would be downed at EF to strength, though tornadic winds simmered down to EF1 level near McIntosh Parkway. It would regain EF2 intensity near Shenandoah Boulevard before weakening as it continued to down many trees throughout the remainder of its life between EFO and EF1 intensity. The tornado crossed into Fayette County and dissipated half an hour after midnight on March 26, 2021. It carved a 39-mile-long path across western Georgia and attributed to an indirect fatality. As debris prevented help from reaching the person who developed a medical emergency on time, the events that transpired on March 25, 2021 are truly anomalous and remarkable, unfortunately, as with many tornado outbreaks. This one changed many people's lives for the worse, with fatalities and a huge amount of damage. This outbreak is often overshadowed by the December outbreaks. Here are the information used in the research of this outbreak, and special thanks for Tornado Data Explorer for the tracks. Thank you for watching this video.